The Jagdpanzer 38, known mostly as the Hetzer or Troublemaker, was a German light tank destroyer based on a modified Czechoslovakian Panzer 38D chassis. The Jagdpanzer 38 was covered entirely with sloped armor and possessed a compact form and low silhouette, giving it much improved defensive ability over other self-propelled guns. The armament consisted of a 7.5 cm Buck 39 gun and a remotely controlled MG-34 machine gun. It featured a wide body to accommodate a four-man crew. The Jagdpanzer 38 first entered service in July of 1944 and would eventually be assigned to a number of units including infantry, Panzerjäger and Volksgrenadier divisions. The factories continually modified and improved the Jagdpanzer 38. One of the most interesting variants of the Hetzer was the Flammpanzer 38, which was a Jagdpanzer 38 modified with a flamethrower in place of the main gun. The first German flamethrower project tanks, like the Flammpanzer III, gave mixed results. The troops received several dozen vehicles with different characteristics, but their use could not have a big impact on the course of the fighting. Nevertheless, the German army continued to order new equipment of this class. In late November of 1944, a proposal appeared to install a flamethrower on a Jagdpanzer 38D Hetzer. The result of this idea was the Flammpanzer 38 vehicle. According to some sources, the emergence of this proposal was associated with preparations of the Ardennes offensive operation. Taking into account the landscape of the upcoming battles, the German High Command considered that the troops needed armored vehicles with flamethrowers. There is also a version according to which a new armored vehicle was created for future urban battles, and the period of its creation simply coincided with the preparations for the operation in the Ardennes sector. Regardless of the specific prerequisites for the emergence of the new project, it was decided to order the industry to develop a new tank for the modernization of existing equipment and then rework a number of existing machines. The development of the new project was entrusted to Böhmisch Marische Maschinenfabrik or the Bohemian Moravian Machinery Factory. It was one of the largest engineering companies in the former Czechoslovakia and today's Czech Republic. During the German occupation of Czechoslovakia during World War II, this company manufactured weapons for the German army, including the Hetzer. One of the main features of the new project, as often happened with similar developments, was the use of the minimum possible number of modifications to speed up order fulfillment. The running gear and engine was unchanged. An armored casemate was added in place of the turret and the main body of the tank. The chassis was also widened. But several changes were necessary to turn the tank destroyer into an actual flamethrower. The biggest modification came with the removal of the gun and accompanying cradle with traverse 
and elevation gears as well as the ammunition storage racks. A 14mm Flammen Werfer was placed in the void left by the gun with limited traverse and elevation angles. The flamethrower was aimed by a periscope, which was added directly above the flame gun. Like the other flam panzers, the nozzle of the flame flammen werfer was protected by a false gun barrel. Firing unlit flame oil and a maximum range of 50 meters could be reached. Unlit fuel was often projected to saturate a target area before it was ignited by a proceeding ignited burst. A 700 liter tank carried enough fuel for 60 to 70 one second bursts of flame at a rate of 10 liters per second. The Flampanzer 38 retained the foreman crew, which consisted of the flamethrower operator, radio operator, commander and the driver. On the 26th of December 1944, altogether 20 Flampanzer 38s were completed and ready for Operation Nordwind. This was the last major German offensive of World War II on the Western Front, which was launched to support the German Ardennes offensive campaign in the Battle of the Bulge, which by late December 1942 had decisively turned against the German forces. This operation began on the 31st of December 1944 in southwestern Germany and northeastern France and ended on the 25th of January 1945. In late December, two Flammpanzer Kompanien were set up, each with 10 Flammpanzer 38s. These were the Panzer Flamm Company 352 and the Panzer Flamm Company 353. The previously mentioned German offensive ended with a failure, but it seems that neither of the companies took part in the operation. The first combat report of the Flamm Panzer 38 was not recorded until late February of 1945. The two companies took part in an attack on a French village near the border of Germany. The action was costly to Company 353, which lost seven of the Flampanzers and all the officers. As such, the remainder of the 353rd was absorbed into the 352nd. In the next action, the remaining 13 Flammpanzers were used to counter Allied bunkers and dug in positions. Street fighting in the nearby village would be the next action for the Flammpanzers. Three vehicles were lost in this action, two to anti-tank and tank gunfire, and the other lost to a mine. An attempt was made to recover the vehicles, but it was damaged beyond repair during a further barrage of Allied fire. By March of 1945, Company 352nd reported that it still had at least nine Flammpanzer 38s, eight of which remained operational. No more information is available about the Flampanzer 38. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.